Welcome to another episode of Getting Projects Done. You know what, let me fix this camera. This is pissing me off here. Let's go this way a bit. That's a little better. Anyway, another episode. Um, these are just episodes of me just painting my models, getting stuff done, getting projects that I'm way behind. All right, this thing's starting off already. Just getting these products out of the way and, you know, just trying to get some good god honest painting done i've got a lot of projects to do i should make a video on everything that's kind of on my to-do list is my thing yeah just all the crap that i've you know that i've got to try and get done because there's a lot of projects a lot of projects just too many no it's not too many it's just a lot it's just a lot of stuff i mean again like you know we're all working on our armies and what have you. I mean, like I have, you know, Eldar models that I want to get done. I still got a whole bunch of Eldar to put together. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of rates to get done, you know. Um, I've got my Deepkin for Age of Sigmar to get done. I've got Wilderkin to get done for Relic Blade. Uh, I'm trying to get currently get through my project of my Corpse Grinders for Necromunda Dark Uprising. So that's going to, I'm going to continue working on that. And in fact, amazingly enough, where we left off last episode is pretty much where I'm still at with that. So kind of amazing that, you know, I haven't been able to sit down and work on these at all. Just, you know, it's the way things work. Sorry, I'm just sipping on a tea here. So I am going to get to work. Um, let's go with this one. Yeah, there we go. So we'll, be, we'll leave it on this camera angle for a little bit. So I got, got these two little guys to work on. Again, was working on this guy last episode. Uh, I never finished off where I was doing with his, uh, the bone of his helmet and stuff. I might touch up some of his flesh, just kind of deepen up some of the areas. Uh, what was some, some other things? And then I think, yeah, and then I think I'll start to get work on uh, some highlights and such. Yeah. All right, and then I was going to highlight the whites, like his pants. And then there's this little plate here that I've been doing kind of this orangey yellow. So we'll get to those as well. But yeah. This guy, too, with this helmet, I kind of want to put more contrast in on his face. Like, not contrast paint, but actual contrast right like uh make it just a little deeper around some of the details bring out the the scary fangs of his face and everything like that oh yeah and then the little metal bits all the little metal bits the chainsaw teeth and yeah so either way enough gum flapping let's just start getting right back to work here on this guy i got my brushes got my water i need some paint uh what do i get over there that's not the right stuff let's grab let's grab We'll start off with that little yellow plate. So what I've been doing for the little yellow plate is, yeah, as I use contrast, I lay down some yellow and then I lay down some, uh, some griffin, griffin, griff hound, some griff hound orange. That's what I do. So first things first, we're gonna lay down some lighter color first. Take another sip of me, of me tea. Get comfy. Nice squeaky chair as usual. And let's see here. Yeah, this has got to get shook up. It's got to get shook. Make sure here. Everything is running good. Yeah. Very, very good. And... Here's my trusty brush. There we go. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, so I'm talking about this little plate right on the back here of this, of this suit. So I'm just going to hit the entire area with this yellow, but I'm not going to apply it too heavily. I actually want some of the brighter yellow to kind of shine through, right? So, we're just going to go like such. Black over the 
area and allow some of the, the deeper orangey yellow to remain. And we're gonna actually push the deeper yellow upwards, kind of going for a bit of that non-metallic metal kind of vibe where you got the deeper color above and the lighter color down below. That's kind of the vibe we're gonna go for here. It's just a vibe. We're not, we're not stressing it too hard actually, but it's just a vibe. So just like that, you can see, just a little bit of yellow, a little bit of the orange, bingo, bango, and we're done. Give that a second dry, and then we'll come in with the Griff Hound Orange. And this, that yeah, needs to be shaken. Just for everybody. <laughs> Just some uh, painting ASMR for everybody. It's not quite dry yet. Now it's dry. So again, I'm not coming in with too much paint here and I'm just gonna push this ever so slightly upwards, really fast here. I'm gonna grab the brush, just a bit of dampness and I'm gonna feather that bottom out. I didn't quite grab it fast enough. Create a little tide mark on me, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, there's a tiniest of little tide marks there, but oh well. If that is that. Uh, what was the next color? What, what color did I use for the boots again? I think it was Wildwood, right? Where's my Wildwood? <laughs> wildwood, there it is. Let's grab a, some Wildwood. Because I'm going to use this on... Just a bit of the bone area, just on the ends of the horns, and yeah. It's kind of tempting just to... Actually, you know what? Did I do it for the other big guys? I'm trying to see what I, how many steps I did here. I don't really think I really fretted it too much. Just getting the flesh done. Because once I splatter the blood on, I mean, like it kind of like just... The blood really just starts to take over, which is what I want. So I want it to be gory and, you know, evil, evil, evil. So, yeah. So I'm just going to use just a bit of this. We're going to just apply this somewhat uh, sparingly onto some of those bone. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's take a little bit and we'll use just a bit of water, thin it out just a bit. It's actually quite a bit of water, but it's all right. Let's grab a bit of it. Uh, yeah, let's give this a try. Let's see how this looks. Uh, are we in frame here? Yeah, we're in frame. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll work good. I just want a deeper, deeper brown on the tip of the horns. And that's all we're looking for. Nothing fancy, just some deeper tone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There might be a little too much water. It's not quite acting how I like it to act. Let's go with a little bit more brown, just the very tip here. Almost going with just pure color from the bottle. Like so. And then we also do the bone up on the horns here. Mm 
just like so. Okay, just to try and keep things interesting. that is all right yeah there we go just some deeper tone on the ends of the horns I like it all right <clears throat> Next thing is what was on on my list here. Oh, I wanted to add more contrast onto the face. For that, I think I will bust out the administratum gray. Where is that? Space wolf gray. I think space wolf gray would cut it. Griff Charger Gray. Looks really blue. I don't know if that's the right color I want. I don't think it's the right color. It's kind of interesting. It's almost like a, like a turquoisey almost. But no, that's not the color I'm looking for. Uh, no. No. That's not my fault. What the frick? Basilicum gray. There it is. Yeah, this should be the right color to use. Just get a little bit more contrast in the face to bring out some of them details. I better be careful though, because I might get tempted to like hit other white areas. I don't really want to do that. Do 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 do. You can still see, gotta shake it up lots. See all that pigment sitting in the bottom. Mm -hmm. oh. I guess I can probably turn this off for the time being. I guess that's how nobody's bugging me with questions right in a moment. I wonder if there's a script for making that kind of pop up when something comes up and then, you know, kind of disappears. Oh, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. There we go. Nice and mixed. All right, so let's grab some silicon gray. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> you know, I kind of want to thin this one down too. So I'm going to slap a little bit onto my palette. Grab just a Dollop of water. Don't too much. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, yeah, it still flows. It still flows. It's still good. It's just good. That's a little heavy. But I can live with it. I don't want to hit the 
this area where the the bone and the helmet connect up. Actually, I kind of like that. It's a little bit more contrast there in the face. It's not horrible. It's not exactly what I was envisioning initially, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm a little happier with that. Just a little bit more contrast in there. George! Hi, Chris. Hi. Iron Guns? I will say hi, Chris. Looks pretty dark over there. What looks pretty dark? How's it look pretty dark? Just the way I got the camera set up here. Let me turn the chat back on so people can see. Yeah. No, I think I'm fine. I'm fine with that. The work area. Well, there's not a lot of light over there, but I mean, for you to see that area, this would become completely blown out. I mean, like, this model from the camera is like only five inches away. So, yeah. I don't think you really want it that way. Like if you do you really want to see the background I, I don't think the background really matters right like here I'll show you you guys asked for it -da -da. yeah there we go so let's go here and yeah there you go but now you can't see the model so would you rather see the background or the model. Take your pick. I don't care. <laughs> oh, that's too dark. Uh, it's about somewhere close to where I had it. I think. Actually, no. Did I have the right focus? Uh, uh, hard to see. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there is good. There we go. So yeah, yeah. So the work area it does look dark, but that's only because I've got like three freaking lights going on here. So, so you can, I mean, you know, like I said, you want to see the background or you want to see the model. Take your pick. Uh, okay. I think what I will do next. Yes, what I will do next is I am going to grab uh, Uthran Gray. Well, I guess, it, no, I will use Uthran. Uthran. No, that's Administratum. There's Uthran. There we go. Get these colors mixed up all the time. <coughs> What? What? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna use some Uthwan Gray. I like this color just because it's a really nice light gray. It's lots of fun. All I'm going to do is I'm going to slap a little bit of this onto my palette. And then just quickly lay up some highlights. Uh, no, I don't need thinner. Just a dampness of the brush. 
ever so slightly. So the way I've been highlighting this stuff is I've just been just like on the, the loincloth stuff, I've been running vertical lines. And so like on the cloth here, I just create a vertical like that, right here. And then on the pants, I've been going sideways. Just kind of keep it sort of interesting. Not being too cautious how I'm laying these highlights down. Being kind of just quick about it. You know, not too too overly concerned. Again, you know, like I'm not painting these up, you know, for competition or anything. These are just I'm going for tabletop here for with these guys. And so Go quiet because I'm, I'm I'm thinking hard. Iron guns. What would you use to paint a smoke effect coming from a gun barrel? Like, are you asking, can it be achieved with just paint alone? Because that'd be a bit challenging. Uh, typically for like muzzle flash and smoke coming from the gun barrel, typically you end up uh, using just like the tiniest dots of uh, super glue and then, um, um, Cotton, cotton from, uh, you know, like, um, like cotton, cotton ball, you know, one of those typically anyway. I have done tutorials on doing um, gun effects. Actually, I was just had the model out just the other day. As soon as I do this, I'll sh show you what I was, what I'm talking about. If that's the kind of thing you're talking about, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Iron guns. Uh, NorCal Todd. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Hey, NorCal Todd. Uh, it's going not too bad. Regular two-inch brush. Hey, gents, just. Finished work at a solid 0200. <laughs> Two in the morning for you? Jeez Louise, you must be in the European side of things. I'm going to assume. Yeah, all I'm doing right now is just laying on these highlights, just kind of building up some brighter tones. I want to go with the nice bright tones so that when I do lay the blood on, you know, it looks nice and contrasty and bloody. 
lots and lots of blood. And yeah, those paints uh, do look bright, don't they? So as I mentioned, I'm just all I'm doing for like the pants and stuff is I'm just doing a sideways highlighting. But for like the loincloth area, I do a vertical highlight. So I run up and down, and then I just kind of like really quickly, almost like I'm sketching. I guess is really what I'm talking about here. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, on that angle, you can kind of see the brush strokes, how they run up and down. And I'm basically doing just almost like a sketch. So then when I do on the pants, wherever I want the highlight to build, I'll just sketch it across like so. And kind of like glazing where you finish your brush stroke on where you want the color to build. It's a similar thing here kind of idea. And so basically all it is is I'm just doing a quick little sketch. I'm not too concerned with building up, you know, really strong highlights or anything like that it's still kind of bright it's blown out you can't really see it unless i adjusted the camera again which would make it darker for everybody but yeah <laughs> but anyway that's all i'm doing i was just laying these quick little highlights down well, like i said nothing fancy <laughs> But the thing is, is that when you lay more and more highlights like this down and you kind of overlap, you end up laying down almost like the mid-tones. And then you end up creating this little texture on the surface, which can help you, you give the impression of, you know, of a texture on that surface rather than just trying to paint, you know, kind of a flat area and I'm out of. Uthran Gray. George, I just sent you an email with a picture of what I want to try paint miniature. I could use any uh, use any and all ideas you have. All right. Regular two-inch brush. Scotland, I'm Lewis on your Discord. Oh, okay, Lewis. Right, I, I knew that. I knew that. I was testing you, Lewis. I was testing you. You passed. You passed the test, Lewis. You passed the test. Man, you're just getting home at 2 a.m. Oof. Oof. Must have been a long day at work. Or school. Whatever it is. I think you said work, didn't you? NorCal Todd, did you ever finish your bubble team? Nope. <laughs> it's another one of those things still on, on my to-do list. They're, in fact, they're sitting right on my shelf. You can see that little patch of yellow? That's them right over there. <laughs> I'll get them done. Actually, uh, I do want to get them done soon because I am planning on uh, filming some games of uh, some Blood Bowl variety. So, yeah. <clears throat> All these little pockets and things. All right, I think that's good enough for the first highlight here. Oh, right, the face. <laughs> I darkened up the face, so now I gotta fix that. So, um, you know what? I'm gonna use Celestial Gray first for that. NorCal Todd. Too many models, not enough time. Yeah, pretty much. 
Well, and the thing is, is like, oftentimes, like when I sit down, and this is just the nature of, you know, basically um, create creating content online, is that whenever you do sit down to actually kind of work on your own personal things, you feel like you should be filming it or documenting it in some fashion because, you know, it almost feels like you're wasting the time, right? So, like, that's why, like, tonight, I was just going to sit down and do some painting. I thought, no, I might as well do a um, getting projects done video because, you know, I got to get this shit done. And so, yeah. So, that's that's why I'm on here, you know. I wasn't too concerned if anybody joined me or not, but I thought, ah, I'll just put a little thing out saying, you know, you know, I'm online, what have you. But, um, yeah. Because I'm just basically going to film this and then... You know, it'll show up on the, uh, on the YouTubes. So right now I'm using Celestra Gray just to reestablish, um, the brighter tones on the face. If I was really, really being, uh, super anal about, um, you know, getting highlights and transitions and such. I'd probably go over the pants and redefine some areas. Um, but I'm not. I'm not that concerned with it. Regular two-inch brush. It's part of the fun with doing shifts. It works best for me, at least. <laughs> Old man Logan, there he is. Hello, Chris. How are you doing this fine evening? Uh, I'm not too bad. Not too bad. Um... Stop reestablishing these brighter tones in the face. Just doing the eyebrows here. Nose and cheekbone. Get the teeth. The scary, scary teeth. Uh, Let's do that chin as well. He's kind of got like that kind of chin, you know, where your face ends, the chin. <laughs> you know, terribly descript, right? This is all like bone here. Actually, I should have painted this bone. Had I realized that bone areas where should be painted bone if i was really really smart i would have done that but i didn't and i don't really feel like going back on it so screw it and just re-establishing that that brighter tone i also fix up the chin the chin had a bit of a green from when i i even got it on the gray on the armor here son of a bitch anyway yeah like I said, I'm not too concerned with, uh, you know, making this perfect because it is just tabletop that I'm painting this to. And so, you know, it's all about just getting the shit done. And that way I can start using it in games start playing with it enjoying it let's pick this up here hmm. yeah so now we can come back in with the Uthran gray George Hintz, does this mean we can't pick your brain? Huh? What do you mean? Can't pick my brain. I don't know what that means. NorCal Todd, I appreciate the videos you put out. Well, thank you. I'm glad you, uh, you enjoy them and uh, you get something from them. Either, you know, maybe a bit of inspiration or 
maybe extra bit of knowledge, something you didn't know, whatever. Either way, I'm glad you find them useful. Oftentimes when I do paint a face, I often start with the eyebrow and then work my way to the nose, the, the uh, cheekbones, the lip. Yeah. Just making that face just a little bit brighter, as you can see. All right, I gotta do the chin. Forgot to do the chin. I almost want to come in and hit the um, top of his head. Is like you know, it's like a skull pattern. You can kind of see on like the very crest of his forehead. I almost want to come in and hit that with bone, but I think I'll just leave it for now. And catch the chin. Brow, make that look solid. Actually, that's not bad right there. I am mostly happy with that. Again, because his face is gonna get covered in freaking blood anyway, so I'm not too worried about. It. He's got the little hoses though under his jaw. I think I should do those in black or something. Yeah, I think I'll get the. Uh, the Black Templar. Where's Black Templar? Black Templar. Old Man Logan. Nah, hit it. Hit it. You mean hit it with the bone? <laughs> hit it with the bone. How's the Black Templar doing? I can't even tell. It's so black. Nah. Keep shaking. Give me an excuse to drink my tea. Actually, my tea's already getting kind of cold. Oh, so the time of recording this, it is Friday, and for me, local time, it's 10 p.m. Eastern, or minus 5 GMT, minus 5 in Daylight Savings, minus 4 in the rest of the year, I think is what it is. Yeah, hit it with the bone. Yeah, hit it with the bone. Yeah, okay, you convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm a real hard sell on it, right? <laughs> all right, so Black Templar, I'm just going to hit these little hoses like right in his collar. Like right, you can see right there and there. And I'm going to hit those with black. Black contrast, I should say. Now this kind of stuff is where I really love contrast. Because I can just quickly hit that little area. See? Bingo, bango, and it's done. I don't have to try and thin it down or get the right consistency. All I have to do is touch the area with my brush and bang, it's done. Right? And I likey that. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, old man Logan, you convinced me. I'm gonna hit it with. I'm gonna hit that bone with bone. Some hot bone on bone action. What is this? Nope. There, skeleton horde. Skeleton horde. The horde of skeleton. Sorry, I was bringing the bottle up close so I can just see it in the light. Just see if I, how much I need. Oh, you can kind of see it on the camera here where, like, basically if there's sediment, obviously it gets really, you know, opaque looking there. But see, because I can see right through it, I don't have to shake it up too much. Old Man Logan, a great black I have been using lately is the black, tire black, by Secret Weapon. 
Not as fast as contrast, though. Not as fast as contrast, though. Interesting. I don't think I've used any of those colors from um, Secret Weapon. I've used their pigments, and their pigments have been fantastic. But I don't think I've ever used any of like the... Because uh, I know they make like the washes and stuff. Um, now, do they advertise them as something that is comparable to... You know, like a contrast. I realized their, that their wash system came out, I'm pretty sure it came out like a few years ago. It's been around. It's not It's not like it's a brand new product, right? As far as I know, anyway. All right. Boon. Boon. The boon. Oh, you know what? I hate it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Yeah, you can see around on top of his forehead there. We're going to have to build this up a bit, though. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to, right where it connects up with his helmet, I'm going to fill that all in. I left it kind of whitish, but now that I see that we're connecting up, I am going to connect up the color. And I'm being very generous with the application of this color onto the surface because I do want it to be really saturated with the bone color, like so. Yeah, okay, I like it. Good call, man. Good call. Yeah, we'll hit all this stuff with bone. With the bone. The bone. Go. Yeah, that looks a lot better. I like it. Oh, you know what? Those are teeth, right? So we'll come in with just a little bit of color. Just a bit. We'll create some happy colors here. Some happy colors. Here we go. He's a happy little cannibal. He's happy. He likes murdering people because he's a happy little cannibal. He's actually reading the background on these guys, and these guys are fucked. <laughs> hey, uh, corporate grinders? Yeah, these guys are fucked up. It's probably some of the dark... Fuck. Some of the darkest stuff, like, like image, as far as imagery is concerned, some of the darkest stuff to come out of GW in a while. I don't know who they got hired on in there team for background writers but holy shit because <laughs> it basically like the inclusion of these guys into the lore of 40k and necromunda it paints a very bleak very, more bleak picture of the underhive because basically it kind of answers the question what do you do when you have a city of billions you know and there's not a lot of resources well, you start feeding people to people <laughs> is what you do. <laughs> Regular two-inch brush. I need to get some of that contrast paint. While I'd never paint a mini purely with contrast, I can see a lot of uses for it. You can paint a mini entirely with contrast. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, no, there's nothing wrong with it. I, that's, that's the whole point of it is, is to get things done quickly. Um, Yes, you can push effects and stuff like that. Yeah, or you can use it as much or as little as you want. You know, it's entirely up to you. It, your model's your paint, right? Kind of thing. So, you know. But, I mean, limiting yourself to... Well, I wouldn't use contrast on the entire model. That, that kind of thinking I don't think is necessary. And, you know, uh, you're limiting yourself when you start creating these boundaries, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Old man Logan. It's kind of a greenish black. No, they don't advertise that paint as a shade or contrast like paint. It's consistency is similar to Reaper. Okay. 
I would never steer you wrong, Chris. Not intentionally anyway. And then big smiley crazy face. <laughs> Rainbowy crazy. I don't know. It's a crazy bow. Crazy crazy bow. It's a crazy bow. It's a crazy bow face. Old man Logan. It's his world and he just eats all the little people he wants to. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm liking the, the bone on the helmet far better. On the camera here, it, it doesn't look quite as contrasty, but when you look at it by eye, you see a very noticeable difference, and there's a nice separation between it and his helmet. And, yeah, I'm much happier for having changed that to bone and basically making those little parts that come out from his helmet to his antlers makes more sense now. Good call. And did I hit his freaking antler with gray? I did too. Son of a bitch. All right, back to the wildwood. <laughs> back to the wildwood. I didn't even see that before. God dang it. All right, it's okay. Because we're just going to build that color right up. We're just going to paint right on top of it and hide our crimes. Because we're hiding crimes now. This seems to be an expression that gets a lot of use these days. Hiding your crimes. Everybody's all about hiding their crimes now. Anyway. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Okay, so, uh, what shall we do next? Let's finish off the armor. For the armor, all I did was Cabalite Green, and then I thinned down Tarragon, Tarragon, Tar Tarragon, Tarragon Turquoise to a really thin consistency, laid it on, and then I'm pretty sure all I did was a quick dry brush of um, gauze blaster green. Sorry, I gotta look back at my other models here. Yeah, so like, there's not a lot of work on these models. It's pretty much just a, a base coat, shade wash, fast highlight, and that's it. Again, like I said, the, I'm just going for tabletop with these guys. So if it looks like I've spent time on the model, I fooled you. <laughs> you've been fooled. You've been duped. You've been duped. Um, what color was I looking for? Oh, Gauss Blaster. Gauss Blaster Green? Or should I use... Uh, where is my... There it is. Hellion Green. That's it. Not Gauss Blaster Green. They're supposed to be like similar shades, but they don't look very similar, do they? And the... Hellion Green actually has a little bit more of a lighter tone to it than Gauze Blaster. But I'm going to use Hellion Green on the Ama. Ama. Right? Right. Okay. So, grab, grabbing my drying brush. Uh, where's my drying brush? Is this the one I used? Yeah, it looks like it. I got all sorts of brushes. Got all sorts of brushes. This is one of my containers of brushes. <laughs> I've got three. I got three cups on my desk right there. You can probably see right on the camera here. Yeah, I got three cups of brushes there. I've got more brushes there, and I got more brushes over here. But my good brushes over here, and then also my other brushes here. I'm up to here in brushes. <laughs> Uh, where am I? George Hintz, any idea on how to look, on how to the look of the horse of the picture I sent you? I haven't even looked at my email, bud. Um, yeah. Uh, regular two-inch brush. Interesting point. I just meant that there are certain effects I could achieve way easier with contrast, but I spent a good amount of time practicing with normal paints and enjoy the results I get. Sure. You know, and I, I think that's probably why so many people kind of resist something like this, especially, and well, it's, it's kind of anything new, right? Um, you know, I mean, like, I don't get super fired up about stuff, but first time I tried contrast, I really enjoyed them, but I mean, I enjoy them 
in the same or like i treat contrast paints the same way i treat any clear colors tamiya clear minotaur um the forge world clear colors i treat them all the same uh, they're just clear colors that's all they are and you know but i mean with the contrast paints because of the way they're formulated the way the color match so that they can you know work within your um within your existing paint line and that they're you know they tried to match them close to the rest of their range it's kind of handy it's kind of handy and so you know i mean it, it's all it is intended for is just to speed up getting your armies painted that's all it is i mean it's, it's the paint isn't going to make you a better painter by any stretch of the imagination nothing will do that other than one simple thing right there's one thing and it's completely free for the most part. <laughs> it's completely free and it, and it is 100%, 100% guaranteed, 100% will make you a better painter. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, get out. No, I'm just kidding. too much too much dry okay so let's start dry brushing let's get this shit done i'm not too worried about hitting other areas that aren't the green because this color is so light that it's it's barely gonna be noticeable on other areas well except really dark areas like the area I just hit. <laughs> I can clean that up in a sec. Yeah. So it just puts a nice little, little brighter edge on things, right? Let's get that shoulder pad just a little bit more. And you can see I'm using this big old brush. That's just so I can get some broad sweeps in. Oh, the knees. I forgot the knees. I forgot the knees. Let's do the knees. There we go. There we go. Now, the inside parts of the arms and stuff. Uh, oh, no. Okay. I should be able to get all these details. I was thinking, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to get them. Oh, no. I'll have to hide them. <laughs> But no, I got him. I got him. Relax. Relax, people. I got him. I got, I've got it handled. I've got it handled. Okay. All right. Oh, I almost rinsed my, <laughs> my brush off in my teeth. Oh, I know. I wouldn't be the first asshole to do that. All right. Well, I'm going to wash this brush. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to quickly head over. Oh, no, it's not this email. I was going to check the email from George, but. Oh, excuse me. It's in my way of the brush email. I, I don't ha I don't often have my way of the brush email up all the time. As my general correspondence is on my other email. <clears throat> um, George, is this something that I have to answer tonight? Can I answer it tomorrow on way of the brush? Seeing as how it is an email. I just like knocking this crap out of the brushes. Like when I use the dries and stuff like that, I always wash the brushes right after just because, you know, I don't want to deal with cross contamination with paints or anything like that. It's not terribly necessary, just one of the things I often do. All right. 
So that is looking okay, I think. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna grab a gauze blaster green. I'm just grabbing a bit of my gauze blaster green here. I'm just gonna do just a little bit of edging to clear some stuff up. Just a little bit. I just kinda wanna define this edge over here a bit more too. On the axe. The other thing I considered when doing these weapons was uh, adding some weathering and stuff. And, but I thought, nah, nah. Just going around doing some edging here. Let's bring up some of these points here. It was just a little bit tricky to get into. Just a little bit. Just like so. George, you haven't you haven't answered my question yet, George. Are you even listening? I want me to answer your question, but are you here? Are you even listening to me, man? thing about edge highlighting sometimes you can start to go a little bit overboard doing this and that and laying this edge down and that edge down and kind of just heading all over the place you know but anyway okay that's it for the green um Is that all I want to do with the white? Do I do with the white? No, I come in with white. All right, we'll come in with white. All right, well, I'm still not seeing anything here. Let me go back to my, let's see here. <sighs> okay.
Okay, so I'm looking at your email, George. I could use some help painting a miniature to look like this horse. The miniature that I'm painted is a winged unicorn. And so, what do you want to know about painting that horse? To achieve those colors? Or what? like this horse. The miniature that I'm painting is a winged unicorn. Okay. What do you want to know? Come on, man. I need specifics. Specifics. You can't just hit me with a big, broad question like that. So I have no idea what it is that you're having problems with. So, I don't even know if you're still here. <laughs> still haven't answered my question. All right, I'm grabbing it. Oh. God, I gotta reach so far. There's George. Okay. The horse looks almost metal or pearl. Okay. So you want to paint the horse like metal or pearl? Is that what you're saying? It looks that way. It's got a sheen to it. But I mean, just, I mean, just look at the colors that you're seeing and apply them to the horse that you're painting. Do you want it to actually have a sheen or do you want it to have that painted look like you see in the picture? I guess is, is the big thing, right? <clears throat> You're trying to get the color and shine of the horse, right? But do you want it to actually shine or do you want it to look like the picture? Because just painting, just what you see in that picture, just paint onto the model, right? So use those colors you see and apply them and where you have those very abrupt highlights that's where you're going to apply very abrupt highlights right um if you're trying to like yeah like i'm not 100 percent sure like what what is your like what like yeah what is the design like you want it to look like that horse but again 3D miniatures are not 2D pictures, right? So, do you want it to look like that 2D picture? In which case, you can achieve that with just colors. Just paint them onto that surface. Or do you actually want it to have that, that apparent luminosity that you know that the horse actually has in person, right? What result are you trying to go for? Do you want it to have the actual three-dimensional shine? Or do you want it to have like what you see in the picture and just, you know what I mean? Cause that's, it's paint, doing that effect on that horse and painting it that way. It'll only work from a couple of perspectives. It's kind of like non-metallic metal where it's, you know, it's going to only work from a couple of pers perspectives. Whereas actual metallic paint, you know, for metals works in my opinion, works better because it actually illuminates and, you know, Edmund Flow, what's up, everybody? What's up, Edmund Flow? Yeah, so I guess re really, like, what 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 is your what is your desired end result? I realize you want to paint it like the picture, but having asked that, sorry, I'm trying to clear up this little bit of dry paint out of my thing here. Actually, I should just chuck that right in the garbage. Yeah, so like painting it like the picture, it's, you know, I mean, from what I understand, you, you should be able to do it, right? I mean, I, I'm assuming you, you from our co previous conversations, you, you uh, sound like a person who knows what he's doing with a brush. So, 
yeah just paint what you see on, on the model right look at the model look at what perspective you have on that horse uh extrapolate obviously what you think would go where now painting it just like that horse and painting it with two-dimensional paints two-dimensional paints opaque paints you know you're gonna have to really push those contrasts between the mid-tones and those highlights right because those highlights are really kind of blown out especially in the photograph at least from what i saw um the photo yeah like the the that's not blown out but it's it's pretty darn bright now if your design if your end goal is because you know that that horse should be shiny achieving that result yeah you i mean you're probably going to use a combination of i don't know if it'll be metallics but you definitely want to use like a satin varnish something not too glossy but has a bit of reflectivity to it um i don't think you it would be entirely necessary to use i mean like you, one of the colors actually that would probably actually work pretty well is scale 75 um citrine citrine alchemy it's a very light metallic uh gold goldish color and that actually would work if you wanted to go for that really kind of shiny uh and you could also push uh deeper tones into the metallics and push that into the shadows so that you just have just that you know, like opaque color right so it would knock the metallicness out of the paint so that it would actually become more opaque in the shadows but brighter in the highlights that's something to try but it might end up looking a little too uh too me too metallic on a 3d model right rather than simply just painting those brighter colors onto the horse and just giving that impression and then finishing it with satin might achieve your desired result rather than going to like a metallic paint george the two ideas that i have is the uh is the paint use metals or pearl and paint as one is non-metallic metal yeah i mean doing it as non-metallic metal for lack of a better term um yeah i mean just look at the picture and just paint what you see on that picture you know just color match whatever paints you have and color match the colors um yeah uh if you do some more research into um the patterning of how the hair flows on this on the surface of a horse did i lay white down i did too i'm still freaking gum flapping here um yeah you, you should be able to do it you, with without the need of metallic paints because I'm not 100% sure that metallic paints are going to give you the right look. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's actually going to be what you're looking for. I mean, you can you can try it. I'm not a, I'm not convinced that it is what you are after though. But maybe it is what you're after. I don't know. I can't say. I'm I'm not the one with the vision for what you're working on. I have no idea what you're working on. You said a unicorn, but unicorns take on many forms. So Yeah. So yeah, I probably would just um, paint it in opaque colors and finish it with a satin varnish. And that most likely will achieve the desired result you're, you're probably looking for. I would assume, I don't know.
So really quickly here, all I'm just doing is laying these highlights in like I did before. Okay, so I'm just going in kind of a side to side motion, just pulling it down. Again, I'm not killing myself on these highlights or anything like that. I'm not trying to, you know, blend this to my heart's content kind of thing. I'm just quickly laying some shit down. The white's all blown out anyway. I can't even see what the highlights I'm doing. Uh, all right. I think we're on to the metals now. <coughs> Hail Bop. What is that emoji? I don't know what that emoji is. I don't know what that is. Some sort of picture of something. I don't know what it is, buddy. George. My wife went through the picture of horses that I have, and that horse is the one she wants. Okay. Well, then paint it like that. Um, I'm pretty sure. I like. I mean, I. I don't know. I don't know what else. I mean, like, do you want me to tell you to use metallics or not to use metallics? Like. I probably wouldn't use metallics. I would paint that horse how you see it in the picture. Use those colors. Follow the direction of hairs. Lay those hair colors down. That picture, because it, it's it's a really bright light uh, on a sunny day in that picture, it, the highlights and such are very abrupt. There's very little transitions, uh, which you know can kind of help, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, if it's for a model, like if it's for, like, you know, a model, um, yeah, I'd probably finish it with a satin, and that'll, that'll most likely give you what you're looking for. If you want to give it a shot with metallics, um, without it looking like metallics, like using, like, say, Citadel metallics, uh, the, the flakes are just a little big, and it'll just end up looking, you know, it's not gonna, I don't think it would be what you were after where you'd have to go for something a lot finer in metallics. But, yeah. Yeah, I most likely would just go with opaque colors and finish it with a satin varnish and go for that. All right. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking for my metallic... Thrash metal, black metal, there it is. Going for my scale 70, speaking of scale 75, I'm going to use some black metal. I like this metal, a lot of fun. This is what I use on all the other uh, miniatures, I just use black metal. Give it a Citadel uh, non oil uh, gloss wash, quick little dry brush of Necron compound, done. That's it, done. Very, very light dry brush, so I'm t just catching just the edges. When I do the dry brush, it's just to catch edges. Hail Bop! Got done painting for the night. Cool. How long have I been running now? Hour 15. Okay. We're okay. Yeah, if anybody else has any ideas to help George out as far as, um, you know, painting a very shiny horse, right? Like, I'm sure some of you has seen a lot of horses in sunlight and you know how the, the in in the light you know it it, it just because it's just such a glossy slick coat on them that you know it obviously obviously does so much light bounces back at you right and so if anybody has any ideas any good ideas uh, feel free to uh, let um george know but yeah i mean personally i just paint it like i see the reference picture i paint it with just those colors and finish it with a satin yeah, and be done. Hail Bop, the sheen of horsehair? Yeah, the sheen of horsehair. Not, I think, getting caught up in the actual sheen rather than um, what the, the perceived look is. I think that's where, I think that's where we're kind of getting hung up. Because, I mean, yeah, you could go with metal you know but i think that would look a little weird a metal horse but if that's what you want to do that's what you're going to do right so if you want your horse metal by all 
all means paint your horse metal. It's your, it's your models. You paint them however you like. You bought them, you can paint them however you like. And uh, that is the opinion I have held for a very long time. If I spend my hard-earned money on something, god damn it, I'm doing whatever the hell I want with it. laying down some some black metal see how shiny that is yeah ebb and flow black metal is the true metal bro <laughs> bro Okay. Oh, these little icons on their arms. Like these little blades or something coming out of them. George, I just wanted your opinion. I have others. I collect ideas before applying paint. Thank you for your for your input. I value your opinion. Well, thank you. Um, I've mentioned this many times, George. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Just give it a try. If it works, then it works. If it doesn't, try it again. Um, now, if this is something special for a loved one, then maybe try it out on a similar model, but something, you know, that you can afford to mess up. You know what I mean? Like, find another, you know, horse model and, you know, try the effect out. And if it works out like how you plan, then great. And if it doesn't, then, you know, try again. Try, try again. <clears throat> but don't overthink it, man. Because otherwise, you'll do nothing. You'll get nothing done. The project will never get started. Because you'll be sitting there going, well, I just want to get the right thing. Well, you know what? If it's something that has not been attempted or is not very common, you're not going to get a lot of reference material as far as something as a guide to help you through it um it's just not going to be there for you you're going to have to dive in you're going to have to be uh, a pioneer in this regard and you know set the first trail so you know stop overthinking just fucking do it there's so much of that these days so many people overthinking this and that and just just do it just get it done my god you know i don't know how many times i gotta say it you know this is this isn't rocket science we're not splitting atoms here we're just painting a miniature all right that's all we're doing it's all we're doing oh i must hit my teacup again Uh, Hail Bop, metal horse. Does it listen to heavy or deaf? A metal horse? Yeah. 
<laughs> or country metal hybrid. Is that a thing? Is country metal a hybrid? Is it? Does country metal exist? I don't know. Because uh, a lot of country music does not show up on my radar. Um, I could not tell you if country metal was a thing. No, I, ha I have no idea. And honestly, I think knowing of country metal, I probably would fear the apocalypse was soon. <laughs> yeah, if, if country metal was a, an actual thing, yeah, I would be sure that the apocalypse was coming. Just paint little buckles and there's a little skull and chain on his belt here or on his loincloth we'll quickly get these done Is that it for metal? Metal air, metal air, metal air, metal air, metal air, metal air, metal air. Oh, the little pipes on the little pipes on his back here. Yeah, we'll do those metal too. Um, regular two-inch brush. Put a mood board together, basically a bunch of images that have the aesthetics and colors, etc., that you like, and use that as your inspiration. And just do it, bro. That's it. That's all you got to do, right? Just start doing it. Stop fucking theorizing about it and just fucking get it done just stop alright <clears throat> because you could just sit there and just spin your wheels you know theorizing about this and that waiting until it's the idea is perfect, but you'll never know until you execute and actually encounter any kind of issues. You're not going to know, right? So just do it. Uh, okay, so that's done. That's done. Hey, you know what? I think this guy is pretty much done. Um, yeah. This guy's pretty much done, so I can move on to the next one. So we'll put him over there. Because that guy will get all sorts of blood splatter and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, oh, you know what? While I got this paint out, you know what I'll quickly do? Is I'll use the rest of it to do his saw blade. Get that saw blade ready. That's going to be fun once there's a bunch of blood on And I think once I get this model um, on, well, yeah, pretty much based, um, I'm going to do the uh, drippy gore blood splatter stuff on this guy. So anybody who's uh, been tuned into the channel 
expect that in the future. Hopefully soon. I'm hoping to get this. I'm hoping to get this gang done. Because, in fact, I'm getting a little bit drained doing this project. And so yeah, I'm just about ready to be done with this project. And these little couplings. You know what? I'm gonna do these metal as well. Just because. All right, comments, comments, comments. Hail Bob. There are some that are starting to bridge the gap. Oh, the the country metal. George, yes, there is a thing called country metal, just like hillbilly rock or rockabilly. I myself am not a fan of country metal. No, I guess not. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I don't know. It's usually not something that's uh, you know showing up on my on my radar, so I don't really pay it too much mind. There we go. Okay. All right. What time are we at here? Okay, hour and a half. Hour and a half. We're starting our next guy now. As some of you may or may not recall, in the previous video. I was talking about this guy's hood and I did it white but what should I do the helmet should I do the helmet in metal should I do the helmet in a color should I leave it white because I like the white cloth because once I start splattering the blood around it's gonna show up really nicely on his on his hood should I do his helmet in a metallic red do his helmet metal? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll do his helmet metal. Yeah. Because it's just the little face grill and the little ends that are poking out from his hood that uh, that you can kind of see. But, yeah. Yeah, I think I will. I think I will. Screw it. Let's do it metal. Okay, we're grabbing the black metal again. Screw it. We're busting it back out. Just because Hale Bop said do it metal, I'm doing it metal. So this how, that's how this is going down. Oh, I hate when these freaking bottles get a little bit clogged. You gotta be careful too, because if you apply too much pressure, it all comes just jetting out. And that's a pain in the ass. All right. Let's mm, come in like this. Yeah, the metal kind of gives him a Doctor Doom kind of look. <laughs> Sort of super villain. Um, you know what? I like the metal. Yeah, I like it. I'm okay with it. So now we just gotta do these little end things here. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or not, but I like it. It works for me. 
I'm not really a hard one to convince sometimes. Well, most of the time. Yeah, I like the metal. Because if once the metal gets kind of like a um, couple little splish splashes of blood and stuff like that, yeah, that'll look pretty cool. I think, anyway. Yeah. Pretty as a picture. I like it. I almost want to come in with a little bit more contrast on the white areas. Now, how I would do that in any normal situation, I would grab some Celestra Gray. Give it a good shake. And then I would probably grab some uh, Lamian Medium. And a drop of Flowade. Liquitex Flowade. Just make a nice little shade wash out of it and just apply it and just be very deliberate and allow it to kind of creep into some of the low points. Which is what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to move, I'm going to make some more palette space here. Uh, let's grab uh, two drops, two drops. One, two. <laughs> that about actually I want to throw a little bit more water in that there we go there's the consistency I'm looking for yeah milky nice and milky Hood. Let's grab a fairly generous amount on my brush. Just start laying it in. Letting it fall within the recesses. Like so. <laughs> Excuse me. want to have it a bit more contrast. Hmm. 
Catfish shotgun beers. <laughs> Catfish, there's such a thing as country metal? Yeah, apparently. 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 I know, Catfish. I'm as horrified as you. As I mentioned, I'm sure the apocalypse is not far off with the advent of country metal. with something a little bit more contrasted just to make it a little bit more interesting but again I don't want to take too much time doing this because I want to get to get to the plan right and so you always got to make them choices You know what? I'm going to add. Do I still have that basilicum grain? I do. Um, <laughs> catfish. I always feel like listening to Bolt Thrower when painting models. Um, all I have is uh, the Fourth Crusade, War Master, and the first album. The one with uh, the Rogue Trader on the cover. I'm going to take a little bit of this Basilicum Gray. I'm going to add it to my little mixture of um, Celestial Gray. Just to deepen the tone just a bit. You know what? I like that. It's a little bit dark, but I'm okay. Because I'm going to thin it down a little bit more with some more water. It's a lot darker now. It's a lot more noticeable, but I like the tone. Me likey. Yeah. So let me see here. I'm giving me a completely different tone. Like it's not a blue gray, even though I added this basilicum gray to it. It's not a it's not casting back a blue gray because it's mixed with the celestra. So it's giving me more almost like a like a mechanicum standard gray. Kind of that kind of gray. It's kinda of interesting. I was not expecting that. So I was expecting more of the blue gray getting kept thrown back at me giving me more of that colder stone gray if that makes any sense yeah you can kind of see there so it doesn't look quite as white anymore right it's a lot, it's a lot colder looking and thin it down just a little bit more let's try it on the fists just get it to fall within the fingertips and such. Yeah, you know what? That's all right, right there. Yeah. All right. I'm still mostly okay with this because this guy is like a kind of a different character he is a he's the champion so he's the cutter I believe because the butcher is the leader cutter is the champion and so 
Yeah. You know what? I'm kind of happy with all this. Yeah, it's a different it's a different kind of tone, but I'm liking it. It's very very light. It is a lot more contrasty, but it's not too far gone from um, from a light gray that I like that I'm going for initially for these tones because I don't want to lose so much of my of my gray tone. Because otherwise I have to build it all back later, right? And that's going to be just a pain in the ass, so. Yeah. 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 You know what? I'm okay with all that. Yeah, that's fun. I'm going to let that dry. Yeah, I can actually see that a lot better on this guy. Oh, uh, where am I in these comments? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, Dranus. Oh, Dranus. Oh, ye Dranus. Chris, your videos with Gorilla Miniature Gaming and Hero Quest actually got me into descent ever painted the minis for the game series no i have not descent i'm not that familiar with it descent now i kind of want to look it up what is descent descent the board game is that what it is descent board game let's try that descent board game Mm -hmm. From Fantasy Flight? Is that who makes this? Let's go by images here. Oh, excuse me. Fantasy Flight, the miniatures at Fantasy Flight, at least because like I have like the talisman. And they're kind of small. The details are a little soft. I'm not crazy on them as far as like, you know, paintable miniatures are concerned. Uh, and the fact that they're done in that PVC... Oh, the board game. Somebody painted all the miniatures. Holy kermoles. That's pretty cool. Um, no, I'm not that I'm not familiar with this at all. So yeah. Interesting. How big are the models? They don't look very big. They almost look like they're the same size as the talisman models. But the details don't look as um like the talisman models, they they have very very fine details, and it doesn't translate very well on the miniatures. Descent journeys into the dark. Yeah, that's what I was just looking at. I think right. Is that what I was just looking at? Oh, I closed the tab window. Oops. Uh, reopen close tab. Ah, perfect. Um. Yeah, is that what it's called? Journeys into the dark. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just looking at from Fantasy Flight. Yeah, uh, but no, I I have not painted the models. Um, I have I have talisman from Fantasy Flight, and the you know I was toying with the idea of painting the miniatures, and then you know there's such fine little details, and they're kind of soft because of the of the manufacturing process, and I was like, eh, I don't know if I really feel like you know, just they're not going to get done justice. I mean, like if I threw a quick paint job on them or anything like that, then maybe, but. No. 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 Uh, Catfish. That's all you really need, but you really can't go wrong with any bolt tour. Also, rip Neil Pert. Yeah. Just wanted to say, what's up? Heading to bed. See you on Way the Brush. Yeah, I'll be doing Way the Brush in 
12 hours. <laughs> Less than 12, or just over 12 hours. How long have I been on right now? Oh, we're getting close to two hours. I'm probably going to cut this short in just a little bit. But yeah, Odranus, Odranus, Odranus. Yeah. Um, I don't know, is the board game any good? Uh, I like some of the board games where the, the models are a bit bigger than say like uh, games workshop size models. Um, you know, I consider painting something like those, but the ones with the really, really small models and like the faces are kind of just like a nose and a brow. You know what I mean? Like I'm not really crazy about those because my OCD kicks in and I want to put a face there and I, you know, just doing a shade wash over that and just kind of, you know, like it just really would not sit well with me. I, I would labor over it and stress over it and you know yeah I, I would not have fun doing it basically is what I'm saying still wet still wet in some of those areas there shit did I get under the arm there I don't know if I got under that arm let's grab some of this color let's apply it right up inside Actually, we'll have to do the other arm as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I might as well lay a little more down now. Go down the rabbit hole now. interior face here do this color up inside the hood make it nice and dark and sinister yeah yeah I like that a lot better And this guy I probably will spend a bit more time on just because he is kind of a, a different guy. He is the cutter. No, not is he a cutter? What the hell is he now? Let's, let's go to the book. Actually, I'm gonna let that dry. And yeah, there's only a few minutes left that I'll do of the show. So uh where's the dude? What the heck? How are these guys called again? Yeah, okay, so it's a, a butcher, a cutter, skinner, like skinner, and initiative. Initiate. Hmm. But how are you supposed to tell the, the skinners from the cutter? Like, is there any distinctive feature that separates a skinner from a cutter? Because obviously, this guy here is going to be my butcher. This is the butcher. So everybody who's wondering, see how nice and clean that is? Eventually, it's going to look all messy like that. That's what this guy's going to look like. Too close. Too close. So, yeah. So this guy is going to be my butcher, but like when you're looking at, say, this guy and this guy, like are these cutters or, or are they skinners? I guess they're whatever I say they are, right? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. 
let's say they're skin cutters. Ah, skin cutters. It sounds a little emo, actually. <laughs> you guys are all you guys are all emo. Anyway. Um Ordranus. Most of the minis have faces. In the game? Oh, yeah? Oh, you enjoy it a lot. It's not HeroQuest, but it is a lot of fun to play. I play against the app, co-op, but the most common game mode there is a player, Overlord, playing against the heroes with his own set of goals to win. They're 25 millimeter figures. All Fantasy Flight minis are. Okay, so they're like the Talisman figures. So, yeah. I don't... I wouldn't... I wouldn't really want to paint them up. I, I like the talisman. Do I have the talisman models here? No, they're boxes elsewhere. Um, yeah, they're just. I mean, they they look great. They look just like the art, but I don't know painting them. They're just I don't know. It's not something like as soon as I open up, it's not like oh yeah, because like it was kind of like these guys here for like core space. They're that similar kind of plastic, and then these guys here are a little bit bigger than a talisman model and but i clean these guys up and it's that um that kind of plastic where when you start taking down the mold lines it you see these little fibers and i don't like that uh you see it a lot with like pvc and um you know other things and the thing is is what these kind of model or these what however they're making these these little figurines that's you know it's all right, but I don't know. I mean, you can see there's details there, and you know, you can see like his his belt pack. You can see his gun, and but he's pretty big. I mean, this guy's bigger than the talisman models. The talisman models are probably about to his collarbone in height. They're a bit smaller, you know. And if that's the same size as model, I mean, like this guy in comparison to say like, uh, a, well, a Games Workshop figure, right? Here we go. So he's not too far off from a games workshop figure yeah i don't know anyway oh. so i think uh, that's about all the painting i'm going to get done for this evening uh i want to thank you guys for tuning in um hopefully um this was mildly entertaining. Hopefully, maybe you were painting along and you were just, you know, listening to me ramble on about stuff as usual. Uh, again, like I said, this is a Friday night. I'm going to try and do these uh, these kind of videos uh, on Fridays or Saturday, or not Friday, um, Thursdays or Friday evenings. So if you are in the neighborhood on Twitch, feel free to, uh, you know, jump in and say hi and, you know, just say hi, I guess. <laughs> Let me go to this kit. There we go. So, yeah. Feel free. Stop by. Say hi. Um, I think this is done. I'm done. You guys done? I think I'm, it's like almost 11.30 for me. And, you know, I'm going to get up. I'm pretty much going to leave a lot of this. Oh, well, no. i got to rearrange all this camera shit. Because I do it for way of the brush. Um... Of course, I stream it here on Twitch, so any of you, any of you viewers who uh, prefer Twitch, well, you'll get to see it. And some of you guys who don't, uh, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> I'm on both. Or just go to waythebrush.com and, you know, check stuff out. Is that it? I think we're done. Nothing else? No, no other comments, everybody? Except for big monsters. Except for big monsters? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, like the, the board game looks fun. I don't know. It looks interesting. Um, Fantasy Flight. I like Fantasy Flight. The thing the thing I have with Fantasy Flight is like they make really good rule sets, but you can't just buy the game and crack it open and dive right in that first time. You have to do a trial run at least once or twice. Because the way the rules are written, they're very accurate, and you know, but it's not until you actually 
try out the rule set that you understand what they've written there if that makes sense at least for me anyway like anytime i'm you know like i've read you know games and you know i, I could read the rule book a hundred times and it's not until i play it that I, it all makes sense right and i find that with fantasy flight games except like when you read it, it's like oh my god like who wrote this you know and then you start playing it and you start understanding with like the mindset of what they were talking about and then it becomes very clear and then the games yeah they're, they're very well constructed because the language is very clear uh initially like it's not clear initially but it is clear in the context of the game and so yeah like they're, they're really well written games usually in my experience anyway and um yeah you always have to do that trial run through them first before you know actually diving in into the game and enjoying the game you know anyway <laughs> um no or is night 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 we're done i'm done i'm done painting um i'll see you guys later um again like i said uh thursday or fridays maybe both who knows if i get into the kind of habit of doing these on thursday and fridays um you know, because again, like I said, I, I stream these and then I'll most likely post these to YouTube at some point next week kind of thing, you know. Um, it's just me working on projects. I, I don't know if it's terribly entertaining or terribly informative, but it's what it, it is what it is and that's all that it is. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you for tuning in. Uh, take care of those brushes. They'll take care of you and I will see you guys later. Later? Yeah, later. Well, maybe not later. Later, but later. Later than later, but not later than later. No, later than later, but not later than later. Yeah, you know what I mean.